Hello everybody, uh, welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. And I have, I think, some really fascinating stuff to share with you today. The myth that cartilage cannot be repaired or regenerated is still promoted by the medical profession and still widely believed by the public. It's a really profitable myth. This idea is common reason for prescribing pain medication and injections of gels and cortisone, and it stokes the multi-billion dollar joint replacement industry. Many studies show that this isn't the case, but a new study showing that humans can generate cartilage includes some interesting discoveries with some exciting potential for the future, and that's what I want to talk about today. The mechanism for cartilage re uh, regeneration is similar to the way in which animals like salamander, zebrafish, and hydra can regrow body parts after loss of limbs or other appendages. Researchers started with curiosity about something. Why is it that ankle joints seem to recover more quickly from injury or trauma than knee or hip joints. They discovered that proteins in the cartilage of ankle joints tend to be younger than those in the cartilage of hips and knees. These younger proteins disable a messenger RNA that inhibits new collagen production, allowing for new cartilage to grow within the joint. The researchers also observed that a microRNA regulates this process. These same proteins are active and are the trigger for limb regrowth in animals that have the cap capability of growing new limbs. In other words, the regulators and triggers for limb regrowth in a salamander, for example, are the same as those involved in joint tissue repair in humans. These younger proteins were also observed in the knee and hip joints, but in much smaller quantities, which is the reason why there's such more rapid recovery in ankles than knees and hips. This isn't the first study, by the way, that has shown the ability of cartilage to regenerate. Studies have shown that mature cartilage contains both progenitor and stem cells, which is indicative of the fact that it can and is supposed to actually regenerate. Co-author of the study, Virginia Byers Krauss, says that she hopes that the research will lead to more effective therapies, which might include injecting these particular proteins into knee and hip joints to speed up the process of cartilage regrowth in these areas, which we would probably reduce the number of joint replacements significantly if we were successful in doing that. The research also shows that humans have more similarities to primitive animals like salamanders than previously known. I don't think most of us in all of our complexity think that we're very much like a salamander, but um, we are. And it might be that exploring those similarities might lead to the ability someday to regenerate limbs. Now, this may sound far-fetched, but I don't think it's as far-fetched as you might imagine. Studies dating back to the 1960s showed that electrical stimulation induced limb regeneration in a frog species that was normally non-regenerating. In the 1970s, orthopedic surgeon Robert Becker published an article reporting that applying low voltage electrical stimulation to the stumps of rat forearms following amputation resulted in growth of new bone, bone marrow, uh, cartilage, nerve, skin, muscle, and epiphyseal plate formation. Becker concluded that, quote, regenerative growth can be restored in mammals by application of the appropriate levels of electrical stimulations. Becker's work, by the way, was replicated by another research group. Now, I first found out about Becker's work in a book that he wrote called The Body Electric. It's an older book, and we covered it in an advanced study, um, which is one of the educational series we offer here, where I pick a book every month I think people would be interested in knowing about, but you're probably not going to read. And um, Becker talked a little bit about this, but when I was writing this article, I actually uh, went into the medical journals, to the medical literature, and found uh, the published articles that he had um, uh, that he had authored back when he was doing this research in the 1980s. It was quite fascinating indeed. Um, Becker is also one of the people who did early research on acupuncture, showing that the acupuncture points were very specific for the effect. That if, the, if you do studies with sham acupuncture, you just move the needle, um, the needles, you know, an eighth of an inch even to the to the side, you don't get the same effect. So somehow the Chinese figured out a lot about. Um, the electrical currents in the body uh, a few thousand years ago. We don't exactly know how they did that. But, um, but anyway, uh, you know, the fact that the work was replicated by another research group lends a lot of credibility to it, and it's kind of exciting to think about. Today, electrical stimulation is routinely used to promote the regeneration of nerves, bone, and soft tissue. And it is well known that distal fingertips can be regrown and restored to normal in young children following injury or amputation. Um, and, and I found three studies showing that this is the case. In other words, when a, a small child, this wouldn't work in a teenager, but 
but when a small child ends up um, slamming his hand on the door, something happens where, where um, a piece of the finger is cut off. Um, it's really interesting. The finger will grow back with the nail bed intact and, and everything if it's cleaned properly. So young children have some of this limb regeneration potential too. So it appears that the regenerative capacity of the body is much greater than most people think and that research about it goes really way back. I've often said we should probably start publishing a journal called the Journal of Forgotten Research and focus on the things that have been known for a long time but nothing's really been done about them yet. Um, Becker in his book talks about the fact that at the time um, when he made these discoveries, he was getting his funding from the United States government, uh, but it was discontinued in 1981. Um, he said that the Veterans Administration, which should have had a pretty incredible interest in this based on the number of injured vets who are missing body parts, uh, actually was very resistant to this, put up consistent res uh, resistance to funding his research and, and that of his colleagues. In 1981, in fact, uh, he and his colleagues were offered jobs as night supervisors, which was a step down. I think they all just lost interest and left. Um, so his research was stopped and forgotten. So hopefully this new research will reignite some interest in this type of thing and maybe we'll see something good come out of it. Um, one thing I'll say, you know, uh, this idea of all this very promising stuff and be, having it be ignored is not um, is not uncommon, unfortunately. Um, at our conference, Tom Seafried is one of our speakers. He wrote this marvelous textbook called Cancer as a Metabolic Disease. And, um, and really, he found a lot of research. How He, he made an accidental discovery uh, regarding cancer and uh, early in his career, which got him interested in the topic and doing research on the topic and uh, found a lot of research that had also just gone by the wayside that was very, very promising. And that's the basis of his textbook book and also some of the treatment protocols that he's using to keep terminal patients alive. So um, I suspect that, that if we all were to start digging through the medical journals looking for stuff that goes back decades, um, we'd find all kinds of promising things there that have been forgotten while the medical system is chased after devices and drugs and things that are uh, very, very profitable and defends the interests of, of businesses instead of the interests of public health. So uh, anyway, I thought you would find that fascinating. By the way, for those of you who, who ask, where can you get the references? Um, these article articles based on these video clips are published in our online library. Um, you can join and have access to it. And um, some of you complain that I don't put the articles up for free. Well, we only do so much for free around here. And then these crazy people who work here want to get their paychecks every Monday. So we have to charge you for some of the stuff that we do. So anyway, if you want to become a member, uh, feel free to email me at pampopper at msn.com. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it, and I'll be back to you next week with more news.